coming up on this episode of In For Low. Biggest Jeep's overheated. There you go. Oh. So you're going to get even tippier the further you go. Back That's the up. So if he's going to flop, at least put his arm inside. Well, don't just stand there looking to what to do. Johnson Valley, California, home of the world famous King of the Hammers off-road race, and also home to some of the most difficult trails in the United States. And today, the n low gang is going to get a taste of just how difficult a hammer trail can be. The trail we're gonna run today is called Claw Hammer. Claw Hammer. Claw Hammer is a tough trail. Claw Hammer is a very, very difficult trail. There's nothing at Big Bear that even compares to Claw Hammer. This trail is harder than anything at Big Bear. It's a whole new lead. Hopefully everything goes right and nothing breaks. My biggest concern about Claw Hammer today is I'm gonna break. I've never taken the Jeep up a trail this hard. I think we'll be able to do it, but I think the winch is also gonna be out a few times today, so we'll see how it goes. At just over a half mile long, Clawhammer is on the short list of the most difficult 4x4 trails in Southern California. To make it through this trail, the group will have to cope with huge rocks, dry waterfalls, and ledges. And they'll be attempting it all in the middle of the desert and in temperatures soaring above 100 degrees. The part way up the canyon now, we've got a choice to make here. There's the hard route, which is on the left, has some really big rocks to crawl over. The easy route is to go up to the right but it's uh, a little bit tippy and a little bit uh, puckery at the top. Pucker Peggy doesn't like the thought of being a little bit tippy at the top of the line on the right, so she decides to go through the rocks on the left, which only a few feet into the trail are some of the largest rocks she's ever encountered. I'm uh, kind of stuck right at the moment. There's nothing to connect us around the rock, so either we're going to have to have you back up or somebody's going to have to supply a, another rope to go around there. It, it looks like Peggy got stuck, maybe a little high centered. She needs a little tug. We need to attach this to a rock, and she doesn't have the appropriate hardware to do that. Hey, because I don't think this is going around that rock. Because there's nothing to attach Pucker Peggy's winch to, Klinger has to move his Jeep in front of hers to act as an anchor so she can winch herself off the rocks. There's a steel cable, so we need to get out of the way. Klinger gets tired of the slow pace of the group ahead and decides to take a shortcut around the traffic jam. After over an hour, the group has only moved about 700 yards and is finally approaching the first real obstacle. I'd say we're about a third of the way through the trail and we're up to a little waterfall. It can be very tricky, very slippery, and having the right line here makes all the difference in the world.
Sonata Rubicon is the only four-door JK on the trail today, weighing in at over 5,000 pounds. And with the stick shift, crawling up this trail will be even more of a challenge. Next up is Pucker Peggy, and after getting a look at this obstacle, she's already having second thoughts about this trail. Yep. Got it. Alright, little passenger. Got it. My butt's all puckered up, my heart's about to race out of my chest. Glad it's over with. Marianne has been choosing her lines perfectly all morning and makes this one look easy. Drawing off his years of off-road experience, Iron Man Ed is able to pick the best line from watching the others and sails right over the rocks. As the temperature soars, both the drivers and their machines are starting to feel the heat. I started my Jeep and my temperature gauge went all the way over to almost 260 and my gauge light came on and my engine light came on. The gauges got hot so I shut it off, turned it back on and the red gauge light came on and the temperature went like this. There's no fluid in here. So we're going to add some water and see if we can get it cooled down. Okay, so we filled it up with water, uh, ran it to get the coolant in, make sure it's still full and now we're going to try our luck and hopefully we'll get through this. I think that uh, I bit off more than I could chew. This has been tough. After over three hours and just over 900 yards into the trail, the group reaches the hardest obstacle of the day, a huge ledge simply known as the waterfall. The waterfall is an intimidating two-part obstacle. Most drivers will take the easier lines on the right and the more adventurous will try the impossible line on the left. Once up the first set of ledges, they will then have to get over two giant boulders known as the V-notch. Rock Dr. Jeff starts up the impossible line on the left. In all the times he's done this trail, he's never been able to make it up this line. The one waterfall that Jeff tried to get up was very interesting. It was fun watching him bounce around a little bit. I really thought Dr. Jeff was going to make it up. And he just sat there and bounced and bounced and bounced. The rock doctor admits defeat once again confirming that the impossible line may just be impossible. The pregnant cow just, he was struggling big time. to watch him, poor guy. <laughs> well, don't just stand there looking and tell me what to do. <laughs> After trying to make it up the ledge without any help, Randy is finally ready to ask for some spotting. Lots of noise, a lot of banging, metal scratching, spinning tires, rocks flying.
great. <laughs> After struggling for what seemed like an eternity, Randy finally swallows his pride and asks for the winch. Finally over the first section, the Nata Rubicon now has to get up the second half two huge rocks with a giant V-notch right between them. I think we ought to have him come further this way, put the right front higher up on that rock and straddle the crack instead of getting it. Okay. Okay, come forward, slowly. Okay. He's turning a little passenger now. So you don't fly. Now I'm trying it for the third time. A few rocks in there, we'll see how it is. Go back. Yeah. Straight back? I guess so. Still struggling, the winch comes out again to get the Nata Rubicon over the rocks. back passenger side door was right against the, the rock. I thought I thought if he sl slides at all, it's gonna get a nice gash in that door. After watching how much of a struggle it was for the Nana Rubicon, Pucker Peggy is nervous. But with a lot of spotting and some cheering from the peanut gallery, she makes it up the waterfall relatively easily. I took a wide line. I set up down at the base uh, for the right angle to take a wide line or loop around on the right-hand side. That kind of carried me up. And so when I, I entered the obstacle, the, the climb, it was uh, not as severe. And I avoided that undercut on the uh, left side by the driver tire. Came right up. After watching how easily the other two doors make it up, Chad approaches for what he thinks will be an easy crawl up the waterfall. Another foot that way, and you'll clear it on the uh, suspension. Oh, 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 another three inches. <laughs> another three inches in your skin. After a bit of a struggle, Chad decides to try a new line on the far right that nobody else has tried. No, no, back up. No, no way is he going up right there. I'll tell him if he's gonna flop, at least put his arm inside. I got a little tipsy and then I stopped because I couldn't see past my hood. No. So you're gonna get even tippier the further you go. Back That's the problem. Up. Amber wasn't happy. Tipping this way, tipping this way, it's tipping every way. I'm gonna try to come across here because on, on, on this spot, I keep falling into the same hole. They are building a road for Chad. <laughs> Klinger doesn't want to wait for Chad's road building crew, so he decides to go around them on the impossible line. My plan of attack is to not flip over backwards. I'm just gonna to try to go up the right-hand side of this and hopefully get enough grip to jump up on top of it.
kind of felt that if I bumped it good enough that I would crest it and make it up there. Backed it up about a foot and, and hammered on it. After giving a little punch, he popped right up. Going to Disney World! Clinger tried it and did it with success. It was, uh, it was nice to see. Hot, tired, and dehydrated from the scorching heat, the gang finally reaches the last 100 yards of the trail. Great day. All in all, what a great day. Just another fun day out with the with the gang. Hotter than blazes out here. It was hot today. It was freaking hot today. Heat stroke. I'm dying. Dehydration. I got a little bit dehydrated. I need water. It's still hot. By far the hardest trail I've ever done. It was tough. It was a little bit tougher than I expected. It was a challenge. Nobody had any major breakage. A little bit of uh, strap and action to get people off some uh, rocks. Winch was out a few times. I won't mention who got winched. Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people that come through here need a winch. I'm pooped. Can't wait to get home and hit a shower and sit on the couch. When I get back to camp, there's a couple cold ones waiting for me. Tape's rolling. Claw hammer is, I don't know, I've never been there. Sledgehammer. How about the sledgehammer? No, we're doing claw hammer. We're doing claw? I thought we are doing sledgehammer. No, we can't do sledgehammer. Are you crazy? We could do it. No, we can't. No! <laughs> what was the question? I got stuck really good. Damn it. Oh, I forgot to push the button one more time. <laughs> well, it's very obvious to me. The... <clears throat> My mouth's all dry. Wait till I'm done talking? Don't, don't fucking play that one. That no, not even get. on bloopers, dude. It's hot out here, Randy. It's fucking hot. <laughs> it's a flipping hot day today. Fucking hot today, I tell you. It's terribly hot. It's flipping hot. Can you do that again? Yeah. Hold on. It's fucking hot. You're gonna make me sound like a dickhead now. The best day ever to celebrate five years of sobriety.